put this here? What? This gun, who put this here? I don't know, I thought it was Paul's. Nope, not mine. Go fish. You're telling me you have no eights? That's impossible. You have to have an eight. You calling me a liar? You wanna see my hand? No, Paul, I don't wanna see your hand. If we look at each other's hands, there's no point in playing. Then go fish. You guys realize what this means, don't you? What are you talking about? The gun. Gabe, can this wait? We're playing cards. No, this cannot wait. You got any queens? We have a big fucking problem here. Somebody's gonna get shot. Probably pretty soon with this gun. Gabe, Gabe, okay, chill out. What makes you say that? Chill out. I'll tell you one thing, it's not gonna be me chilling out. It's not gonna be me. Dude, dude, Gabe. Now, what makes you think someone's going to get shot? Isn't it obvious? It's a dramatic imperative. I'm assuming there is such a thing as a dramatic imperative. Don't you think it's a little early? I mean, we're still only in the first scene of the film. Don't you guys get it? That makes it worse. If a gun is introduced in the first act of a film, somebody's gonna get shot. If it's introduced in the first scene, this could be a bloodbath. That's complete crap. I mean, who says? See? One must not put a loaded gun on stage if no one is going to fire it. It's one of the central principles of drama. You put a gun on stage in the first act, it's gonna go off by the third. <coughs> Bang, it has to. Who is this guy? Anton Chekhov. He was like Mr. Theater in Russia. Oh, so if uh, Mr. Theater said we had to use the espresso machine by the end of the film, you would be like uh, steaming milk right now? No, Max, you're thinking of Mr. Coffee. This, oh, no. this is not funny. <laughs> Go ahead, guys, laugh now, but later. Gabe, okay, you're being paranoid. This is a film, it's not a play. Don't you understand? It doesn't matter. It's all drama, same rules. So we'll make it a one-act film. No third act, no problem. Even a one-act drama has an internal three-act structure. As in a beginning, a middle, and an end. Why do we have to worry about all this structural stuff, Gabe? Let's just act natural, you know? Gritty realism, slice of life. Wake up, man. This isn't real life. This is drama, and you have to know the rules. What difference does it make? You'd rather be ignorant? You're basically arguing against awareness, consciousness. This is just mental masturbation, dude. Admit, the last thing we need right now is dramatic conflict. Shut up. Don't tell me what to do. Whoa, Max, calm down. Listen, Max. I'm not so sure if there's a dramatic imperative here, but... We probably don't want to set up any kind of conflict that might have to be resolved with, you know, with that. So let's just uh, start a new story. Do something else, God! Don't be stupid, Max. Our characters are established now. The story has an arc. We can't just start a new story. Oh yeah? I can start a new story if I want. No fucking sweat, Gabe. Go ahead, try, see if I care. Fine, I will. Good. I do not take pride in my skill with prophecies, Cassandra. Yet even I can see the evil in this thing. What good has ever come of prophecies? Pfft, art and a multitude of words drifting through tangled evil bring terror to those who hear. A rule's a rule, Paul. Apollo, why have you brought me here to such sorrow, <laughs> except to die? What else could be? You are possessed by God to sing the song of your death. Oh, Fortuna! That's a really depressing, determinist view of fate. I don't buy it.
See, the camera follows the gun out the window. Problem solved. This isn't gonna work, you know. The gun is still the central dramatic element of the film. How do you mean? Well, the appearance of the gun is the most interesting thing that's happened so far. If only there was something else. We were playing cards earlier. We were almost through the whole deck and I had no eights. That's sort of interesting. Let's concentrate on that. Of course. How could I forget? Paul, it's still... Shh. Look at the cards. No eights. Imagine that. That's really weird. No eights. That's the real mystery here. It's symbolic of... Eight is the symbol for infinity. Sideways, at least. And, and the fact that it's missing is symbolic of how the three of us are, are, are missing infinity. Uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, each of us, in our own way, is uh, missing infinity, or the infinite, uh, absolute... Okay, go with this. You were missing... My father. Uh, he, he was never there for me. Uh, he, he'd, uh... He'd beat you. <laughs> or maybe there was um, some was dark secret in your family. <laughs> no, no, yeah. Daddy! Daddy! I want my daddy back! <laughs> Screw you, at least I'm trying. You're just criticizing. Nobody answer that. It's for me, I ordered a pizza. Max, don't! Gabe, you forget. I'm not part of your depressing little movie, and I'm hungry. Hey, large pepperoni, extra cheese? Yeah, that's mine. Thanks. Is this your gun? Not ours. Never seen it before. What do you want me to do with it? Some kid could find it. Fine, fine. Yeah, we'll take care of it. All right, thanks. This sucks. You guys eat half my pizza and I'm back in the story. One of you guys will probably shoot me before the end of the scene. So go back to your puppets. If I go back to my puppets, you guys will leak my pizza. No, I'll take my chances, thanks. I can't eat. This is too nerve-wracking. Well, this is ridiculous. You guys are looking at this so narrowly. Look, a gun is just an object. It can have a lot of uses. It can, uh, it can be a paperweight. Come on, Paul. A paperweight? Uh, all right, a hammer. Watch this. The gun can be a hammer. Oh, man. Foreshadowing. We're doomed. For Christ's sakes, Gabe, shut up. Now you're just being superstitious. The foreshadowing, that's really open to interpretation. You see that? Another close up. Is that open to interpretation? Get it through your heads, guys. Someone is going to die. Wow. The picture is. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Paul, it's been a while since you've seen your girlfriend. Why don't you invite her over? Be fun. I saw her last night, actually. That must seem like a long time to you. Why don't you call her up, have her over? You guys want me to... 
Wait a second, you want her here so she can get shot. Oh, no, no. Yes, Paul, call her. It's the only way out, man. We've got to increase our odds. You guys are sick. I'm not risking my girlfriend's life because you guys are afraid of some stupid dramatic convention. Forget it. It's not that simple, Paul. This is drama. She's been introduced as another character. She's involved, one way or another. She hasn't been mentioned more than once or twice. She's not dramatically involved. She's just part of my backstory to flesh me out as a character. We haven't even mentioned her name. Oh, really? Your girlfriend, Patty, is such a minor character. Shut up, Gabe. Keep her out of this. Maybe we should ask Max here how well Patty fleshes other people's characters out. After all, he's been sleeping with her. What? Paul, that's a lie. That's ridiculous. Only one way to find out. I wonder who that could be. Go away. Bastard. What are you looking at? Nothing, man. Wait a second. You did sleep with her, didn't you? Paul, I never... Maybe I did. No, you didn't. You just want me to open the door. No, maybe I did. Probably I did. Fine. Paul, what is going on? Did you sleep with him? Did you? What are you talking about? Did you sleep with Max Stubblefield? With Max? Don't be ridiculous. Oh. Good. Then go away. Paul, why the hell are you treating me like this? Patty, look, I'll call you. Please, don't. Let me in. Fine, come in. Did you try throwing the gun out the window? Yes, yes, of course we tried that. What about using it as... Something else, yes, that too. It just made things worse. It's a rule, Patty. A dramatic rule. It's... it's locked in. It's like gravity. You can't escape it. You can escape gravity in a spaceship. Shut up, Max. Anyway, it's like, uh... You just can't escape it, okay? So... So this is it? One of us has to die for the sake of story structure? God... Why? Patty, I just... Don't touch me. But... How could you let me in here? But y the door... Oh, don't give me that. You could have done something. Oh, God. We're not even star-crossed lovers. There's nothing even remotely romantic about dying this way. This is all just some stupid mistake. Patty, I tried. I ripped the phone cord out of the walls. Bullshit! You wanted me here, you bastard! After what you said, how could I not come in? Go away? That is practically an invitation to come in! Couldn't you think of anything better than go away? Like, maybe... Patty, I've discovered I'm gay. Please go away, never contact me again. Finito. One hurt reaction shot. And I would have been out of the story. Patty, I fall... <sighs> Patty doesn't want to hear what you thought or what you tried to do. She just wants to hear that she's not going to die because you won't let her die. Patty, I'm not going to let you die, ever. Gabe, uh, what do I do? Listen, Paul, I'm sorry. It's nothing, it's nothing personal, but, uh, you see, the dramatic focus is on the three of you now, and, well, I can't really afford to get involved. Max! Oh, I'm sorry. Gabe! Don't come over my bridge! Oh, let me pass. Go away! Oh. Hush now, Patty, hush. There's nothing more we can do for Paul. I'm just worried about his suicidal streak. I didn't even know. Hush. Hush. It's okay. Patty, I tried. I tried. But everything I do just makes things worse. Oh, God. It's all my fault. I just screw things up. That's all I do. Paul. Uh, 
pathetic in a dramatic way. Like, pathetic as in pathos. Tragic. All right, all of you, up against the wall! Paul, don't! Move! Now! Paul, oh, but... Pa Paul, put, put... Shut up, all of you! Every word you say brings us closer to the end. God. It didn't have to be this way, you know. Dramatic conventions can be broken. There's no immutable law that says one of us had to die. This could have been a film about peace. This could have been a public service message about gun control. But you had to make it a drama, you structuralist bastard! Oh, calm down. You traitor bitch. How could you leave me for that idiotic, one-dimensional excuse for a character? After all I did for you, you made me look like a fool! Oh, that's right, cling to him, you faithless whore! You know what? I'm glad you came over. You're the one who should be shot. You're the one. Whoa. That was unexpected. You shot me. Yeah. Sorry about that. You okay? Yeah. Jesus, Paul. I never knew you had that much passion in you. That you felt so strongly about us. Well, now you do. No hard feelings? Well, no. Of course not. Oh. Thanks. Guys. <laughs> Guys. You're missing the big picture. Don't you see what just happened? We did it! We eluded fate! This is incredible! <laughs> yeah! Oh, I guess. No, really! This is amazing! When has this ever happened before? Where, where a, a drama has set up something this big and then just not paid it off? Never! We can do anything! <laughs> Free at last! Fate has lost! Anton Chekhov, kiss my ass! Is he dead? Yeah, I think. I can't see. It's so sad. So, uh, what now? I think we just sit here. Do you know if the same dramatic rules apply to a voiceover during the credits? Not sure. We should probably shut up. Yeah, guess so.